Dr. M. S. Gill. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'm grateful you've given me the time. And I'm sorry that my friend, the Honorable Home Minister, has just got up and gone. I, I hope he comes back <coughs> quickly. I will explain. Will I will explain back. why I'm saying He will so. come back. Because the House knows I come from another background and another experience in administration. And uh, so I want to put only a few points which are of interest to the Home Minister. That's why I, I would like to see him present here. I won't take too much time, sir. Uh, the other day, the Home Minister gave an answer <coughs> to a question here on the police. And I have kept those papers since then. And it was a very detailed answer, which gave us a lot of information. There is a clear basic idea for that Even one, 25 crore one, Indians, two, three, four, five. the number of policemen Six, and police seven, officers and is abysmally small totally in a, inappropriate and you can't do the job of giving security to the Indian people. And when I looked at his figures, you see where Italy has 550 uh, policemen per 100, 1 lakh of citizens, Japan has 200, America has 225, New Zealand has almost 200, Spain has more than 300, all of them have this, and their condition is not as bad, as difficult as ours, their challenges. And India has, from the table he gave me, 136 policemen for a lack of population. And this is all governments, by the way. I'm talking beyond government. I'm talking from my background on subjects which are relevant. That's why I'm missing him, but bad luck. And the sanctioned police strength of India by various governments in the past is 182 policemen, but in position is 136 for the total country. When I look at the states, Bihar has only 68, and you know the problems they have. UP, we talk of so much, has only 81. And West Bengal has 77. Again, see even the average of 136. And I remember Bengal, when I was CC, had something in the 70s. How could I do any election in such a difficult state of 9 crores of population? This is our position. And actually, the sanctioned strength by the Home Minister is absolutely poor. And the officers and whoever have been in those chairs I think have something to answer for and something to correct quickly. India has a vast number of law and order and security pro uh, problems. All states have, as you know. When I look at their officers, IPS, that too he gave us information. And the Indian cadre in 2014 of the total police is 4,728. Even the British had more than this level of officers for governing an India of 30, 40 crores then. And this is what we have, the sanctioned strength. What you have in place is less than 4,000, 3,800 you can see. And when I look at these states again, Bihar particularly, 193 officers, a great shortage. Uttar Pradesh, 384. Uttar Pradesh is bigger than almost all countries in the world. Almost 20 crore people, you know that. West Bengal, again a shortage, huge shortage of more than 100. But the total itself for India, sanctioned by the Home Ministry, is not acceptable if you really look at it. But these strengths, incidentally, the constable strength, you know, the states have to do it. They don't like to spend the money or they don't have it. So who's going to do it? And the Home Ministry says we've written to them and they do whatever they do or they don't do it. This is a major problem. In this, the Home Minister should find a way to even give them assistance to say, add 50,000 constables in UP overnight. Let us recruit them. Let us give you a minimum. India should have, instead of 136, at least 200, 250 per 1 lakh of population. 
the, unless you correct this, you're not going to get anywhere. And some have more problems, but nobody has less problems. You can take any state. And the same with IPS and IAS. IAS, I know, even now, I've left it a long time ago, but when I was a young officer, we dreamt of coming as joint secretaries, and the government of India would choose, sometimes fairly by great selection, mostly, and sometimes by whatever nepotism there might be. But we dreamt and we were wanted here. Now most of the, I've been a minister, I had IS officers, uh, people working with me, and most of them were from the postal service, from this and that, those are all great services. I'm not an IS looking down on them, but they're not trained for this job. But now all ministries, an IS officer in Delhi, because he has that general background, is a rarity in any ministry, whoever he is. Now, therefore, all these cadres need to be given a big jump. The Home Ministry, uh, I'm glad uh, the Home Minister is here. The Home Ministry, now, how does it work? There is a personnel ministry for these matters of IAS, IPS, and other services. And that is with the Prime Minister. Some time back, it was taken away from the then Home Minister, and I think taken there. I'm not sure it was a good idea. And there is the Home Ministry and the Home Minister who has to answer to everybody in India. And, sir, I believe it is an unpopular job now. Any government, any party. Huh? They all want something else. So, now the poor Home Minister wants the policeman and the IPS and the IAS, etc. And the personnel minister is looking somewhere else and he's somebody else at all. And nothing is moving. I am aware that the new government and the new Prime Minister says, hum to isko aage le jayenge. But sir, unless you and the Prime Minister sit down together and override a lot of my colleague civil servants, I am one of them, you will get nowhere. And the states also find a way, give money, and then direct that it be used to recruit immediately more people. Not put it in a scheme, now our recruitment also, there is the UPSC, I have appeared before them. They are still in the old system from 1951 constitution. Absolutely stick in the mud, as we call it in English. Stick in the mud. And then they have to deal with the finance ministry, the home ministry, the personnel ministry. And if nobody else finance will say, no, we won't give you money, so nothing moves. Even, I, see, I am glad my friend is shaking his head because I think he agrees with me. And he can go on writing and talking to them. So we will carry on doing what we do. So how to get not just India moving, but this business moving? This is my question. Sir, and who do you recruit and, uh, recruit and how do you recruit? First, there is an idea clear in this country to have more women and states have done, and the government of India last 10 years has been saying, I hope you are going to push it and give at least 30% women quickly. Your problems of women and their security and all sorts of crimes will not go away in Delhi or any town anywhere, wherever it happens, unless there is that strength of the women in the police force and not just put away in non-jobs, SHOs, DSPs, district SPs. And I have watched over a long time, Kiran is not the only one, now it is a common business. There are plenty of girls and mostly better than the men. This is a general perception in all Nokri. We know it. Therefore, sir, if you manage by somehow to quickly recruit a lot of more IPS and DSPs and, you know, the cutting edge, and put them in positions, you'll see your law and order and your ape is taken care of. Aadmi bhi kaise bhi ho, kis jaga ke bhi ho, aap ke ya mere. Lekan wo darte hain jab thodi ginti mein aurte khadi ho. Isi liye we want more women in the Lok Sabha. And that too will change. So sir, you need to do this. Sir, I'll finish quickly. I'm sorry I've taken more time. Sir, the recruitment. We've been arguing here over questions of which language and, uh, language and how much of which language. Sir, I will say only one thing. Whoever you recruit for these higher positions, India is a subcontinent. It is not a unilingual state. 
every language is regional and not known elsewhere. Therefore, whoever you recruit for the superior services, police or civil, they have to be able to function in deep Karnataka, in deep Tamil Nadu, in deep Assam, in deep UP on the Assam border. They have to. And sir, for that, one is the question of which languages. We are 22 languages, all equal under the constitution. You, if you are going to do, focus on that, please do it, but then all of them will have to be used. The second is this business of CSAT and what exam and how do we take it. Sir, on that also, whatever mechanism the UPSC and you decide, I don't want to go into details, please make sure that you get the bodies you want. If you take a fish uh, for a uh, fowl or cheese for chalk or a man who, like me for an engineer, how will I work? So whoever goes and works in far off India, India is a subcontinent. He has to be able to talk to the people there, the leaders there and the remote district villagers. So let's not say I will have my language. Never mind if we all are talking Greek to each other. It won't work. That's all I have to say on that. Please conclude. Just one second. I am aware I won't waste your time. Sir, Delhi, this is important for all sorts of things. When I was minister also, and I've been watching here for a long time, the eastern states, women have a terrible time. Even the men, because they look different, people from round about here want to bash them up and beat them up. They come here for jobs because Delhi is a magnet. It attracts the most from the neighboring states. But now, Eastern India, all our brothers from those states are coming because this is the chance. This is all right. We want it. But then how do you give them security? I know every home minister and everyone tries, tries as hard. When I was youth minister and something happened to a girl, I was the only minister who called all the leaders of all the eastern states. And I spent two hours listening to them. Even that was a relief to them. I wrote long letters to Mr. Chadambaran then, and I must say something got done. Sir, the Delhi police is a national police. The mechanism somehow and the way it has been kept in that control, I won't say manipulation, they are all neighborhood people. I recognize them, I'm, I'm one of them. No, there have to be eastern states, enough constables, enough DSPs and SHOs from South India, from elsewhere. I also know after 1984, certain people I don't see at all in Delhi. Why? Why? Surely they also have a right to come back or is that now a la line marked that after this not? So sir, please give us a national police here. I will give you a technical reason. Men of Kerala don't want to come because they can't go. Today, your criminal and often your men in the police are from the same village and cousins. I want a Keralite or a Tamil or an Eastern state Assamese. But they need some place to stay. Organize staying for those people who come and take a job so far here as constable. If you do that and give the national capital a national police of an effective mix, you will see all your crimes disappear. Otherwise, when they, they, we all go to visit them and we give them relief, nothing will happen. Sir, I've taken too much time. I thank you and I thank everyone. And I would request the Home Minister to look at this. Thank you, Gilji.